Hello there, Virgos. Welcome to your love, romance, and relationship reading. So, um, what I'm hearing is, um, the first message here is like, um, you're dealing with a relationship partner that might be a little bit reckless. You know, like, not, not that they're, you know, running around on you or stepping out on the relationship on you. I feel like they're just reckless. They're not as careful when they do things. They're, they're kind of like adrenaline junkies. And I feel like you're kind of admonishing them, like, you know, you shouldn't have done that. Um, you need to be more careful. And then there's also, you know, that, that uh, moment where things kind of slip out, where you kind of tell them, what would I have done without you? You know, like, if you hurt yourself, what's going to happen to me? That would be really hurtful to me. So I feel like you are telling somebody how much they mean to you because if something were to happen to them i feel like it would be really really emotionally you know damaging for you so i feel like that element is inadvertently coming out in a moment when you're very distressed or you're shocked by somebody's reckless actions so i feel like you're dealing with someone who might be looking for a little bit more fun more excitement more of an adrenaline junkie so they do things that are considered reckless and then on the other hand, I also feel as well, they're saying like, you're not going to need to do this alone anymore. Okay. So if you feel like you've had to uphold the relationship, if you also felt like you had to do everything that the relationship was very unfair and unbalanced, I feel like you're going to drop your burden and you're going to try to move away from it. And uh, on top of that, if you feel like, you know, your partner is taking you for granted, I'm also sensing there is this moment where you're kind of like um, setting expectations, setting boundaries, and just kind of like putting your foot down. I will not stand for this. You guys need to chip in. You guys need to, you know, help me out. Um, I see that coming through. So I feel like you're not going to be alone in it anymore. Okay. And I mentioned earlier with the general reading, I feel like a lot of things are happening for you in the work environment. More responsibilities are picking up. And then as a result of it, you're not going to have the free time and the leisure time to pick up the slack in the relationship. And I also feel like you're not tolerant of it anymore. It's becoming apparent. It's really draining you emotionally and also time wise. So you're going to be very clear about, you know, don't take advantage of me. I'm not going to tolerate it. So let me talk about these three, uh, these three cards first. So first of all, this came out first, I believe. Yeah, this came up first. Um, we have here the Six of Pentacles. The Six of Pentacles is a card about charity. It's a card about goodwill. It's a card about, you know, helping somebody out of the goodness of our hearts. And with this card, it's, it's usually about, you know, wanting the best for another person, doing things we, because we care about the well-being of the other person. And when it shows up in the reverse position, it usually indicates a situation where things are lopsided. One person gives, the other person takes energetically it could be very lopsided where one person talks and talks incessantly about this happened to me at work you know look at what my boss did or my coworker did and they never once asked you how was your day how are you doing are you okay so i feel like there is a relationship here where things are very very uh uneven where the other person is like it could be you or the other person but i feel like it might be another person they're very wrapped up in their own lives and they don't really, you know, care to even ask you, how are you doing? How are you handling things? Is there anything I can help you with? So it's a situation where one person is definitely feeling like they're being taken for granted. And we also have as well, the nine of pentacles and the nine of pentacles. This is, um, I usually think of it as somebody who's, you know, financially things are good and they have a lot of um, free time under their belt to, you know, just relax, read the newspaper, walk around, have coffee in the morning and, you know, just have like a, a lot of leisure time, leisure activity and just a lot of abundance in their lives. In the reverse position, it feels to me like this month is happening very fast. There's more responsibilities. There are more stressors. There are more things happening in your life where it's really reducing the amount of free time that you have. And as a result of it, when you are stressed out, Virgos, let's not lie, you tend to get very grouchy. 
And so I feel like if somebody, you know, even looks at you the wrong way or does something that is, you know, uh, sloppy or a little bit careless, it's really going to work your nerves, okay? So if things are very imbalanced, if, so, if you're living with another person, like um, if you're, you live with a significant other and they never, ever, ever, you know, do their laundry, pick up after themselves or do the dishes, this is the month where you're just like, you know, I work all day, I come home and the dishes are never done. What do you do at home? So I feel like these um, remarks will start to come out. You want to be careful, but at the same time, I feel like there are um, imbalances in your relationship. One person is doing everything and the, that's really going to create some, you know, cracks in the foundation of the relationship if you're not careful it could be you or your partner and i honestly feel like it's going both ways and so one person is feeling a little bit underappreciated and the other person might feel like i i just feel like you know it's lack of consideration it's not malicious it's not intentional it's just there is an imbalance here that needs to be rectified and if this is an ongoing problem I feel like many of you are going to be like, I don't want to deal with this. I'm going to go hang out with my friends. I'm going to go and stay with my, my mother. I'm going to go stay with my father. I'm going to go stay with my sister. Whatever the situation is, I feel like you're kind of shaking your hands off, of, off it. You don't want to deal with it. And you also know that if you deal with it, your tempers will flare up. My advice is talk about this situation because it feels to me like things are busy from your end and also from your significant other's end and then the practical responsibilities kind of fall away or they're not as important they're not on the front burner and so this is something that is unintentional you know but it does build up it does create resentment it needs to be talked about it needs to be nipped in the bud because it's breeding resentment and you're trying to avoid each other okay so for those in relationships do your best to try to fix this okay because I feel like it doesn't need to be this way it doesn't need to escalate so if you nip it in the bud you take care of it you know once and for all and then it doesn't rear its ugly head again um, you know I also feel when you're very upset the, the the best part about you guys is you don't lose your temper so you can be very upset but you're still able to communicate in a way where other people, you know, can understand you, whereas other signs, they blow up and then they just become irrational and uh, incoherent. But I feel like with you, the more upset you are, the more concise and the more precise you are with arguing your point of view. And so when you get upset, I feel like that's when the truth comes out and that's when the other person it's just like, wow, I had no idea. But I feel like you're able to give them some insight, something very clear and very concrete as to, you know, what exactly is the problem, why you're unhappy. And so it needs to be voiced, okay? Your, your dissatisfaction, whatever it is, it needs to be voiced. Don't sweep things under the rug. Don't run away to, you know, sister's house, mother's house, like your, your family to avoid the problem. I don't feel like that's going to serve you well. You've got four cards, actually. Okay. So, first of all, we have a situation here. This is a really good card. It's sort of like overcoming some type of a disappointment as a result of a relationship. Okay? So, usually, dealing with somebody that is, like, um, very, I want to say, they have their own issues. They have, like, emotional hang-ups. They have, you know, past trust issues. They had just internal issues that they couldn't really overcome. And I feel for many of you, um, for, for many of you, this is kind of like a long-standing relationship where there was a lot of history with another person. And so every once in a while, even though I feel like the relationship might have ended some, some time ago, and I would say like within the past year, it might have ended. But every time you think about it, it still tugs at your heartstrings just a little bit. Some of you have recently gone out of like serious relationships and you're at a point where you're trying to figure out what's next, you know, like, um, how do I start dating again? Is it okay for me to date again? 
how do I make myself dateable and um, where do I go to meet single people okay so I feel as if some of you are kind of flirting with the idea of online dating or some of you are flirting with the idea of like um, do I really want to experiment and be a little bit more adventurous like flirting with the idea of like having a fling having a one-night stand having something that is you know like uh, it's not a heavy emotional experience like this past relationship was and you're still very shy you're still you know f flirting with the idea but not really making a move not really making taking the steps in order to do that and I'm also sensing as well um, for many of you there is a major element here about you kind of uh, changing the way that you look changing the way that you appear so like um, possibly I feel like possibly you know going under the knife making yourself look a lot more I just feel like you know cosmetic surgeries elective surgeries um, fixing the way that you look because you feel like it would make you a lot more competitive in the dating market because you feel like competition is fierce and you feel like there's a lot of um, competitors that you have to kind of like uh, go up against and so I, I do see, this is usually when I think about surgery, so I do feel like there are things like, you know, you're trying to overcome when it comes to body image issues. Am I pretty enough? Am I attractive enough? Am I in, uh, fit enough? Am I in shape? Am I wearing the, the right clothes? Am I, you know, going to stand out when I start dating again? And it's been a while where you're kind of like in this state. Um, I feel like for many of you too, you know, people that you were in a relationship might have passed away and you were like married to them or in a relationship with them for a really long time and now that they're out of the picture, you're trying to get your life started. You weren't ready before and you're ready now and you're fearful about how aggressive people can be and you're also fearful about the competition. And so you're doing some things and I feel like once again positioning yourself to be in a position where you're very attractive and I feel like you're going to go ahead with all of these plans to make yourself a lot more marketable and a lot more, um, f they're saying like pleasing to the eyes, okay? For some of you, I feel like if you are dealing here with a Cancerian person from the chariot, so sorry, this is the chariot in the upright position if you're dealing with a cancerian person uh, what basically this denotes is that you have somebody that is you know really trying to work with you i feel like they really care about you there are differences they're very wishy-washy right and they can be very frustrating but i feel like this is the month where they start to really you know tell you I really want to be with you and I really want to make things work what do I need to do to make things work so I feel like there's some truth between you and this water sign Cancerian person because I feel like if in the past you weren't sure how they felt about you they were dealing with a lot of things in their own life they weren't ready or they were just dragging their feet not really clear not really sure until you put your foot down and now they're at a point where they're able to have a lot of success in their life things are going their way and they're coming back in order to make things work okay so it looks very very good if you're dealing here with a cancerian person For those of you in stable relationships, so this is basically um, a marriage, um, a long-term relationship, something that is stable where you kind of know each other, you know, like um, ins and out, you know each other in a very, very deep and in a very intimate way. So if you are in a relationship with another person, I feel like there might be a third party kind of like, um, um, affecting the relationship not that they're able to interfere and get in between and not that your partner is stepping out on the relationship or or you are stepping out on the relationship but there's somebody kind of like looking in from the outside wanting what you have you know um 
wanting to be a part of the relationship, wanting to have the relationship with you or wanting to have a relationship with your partner. So we have here a water sign. And I feel like this is different from um, that Cancerian energy that I felt earlier. So this is a um, Scorpio Pisces Cancer. Um, it shows up here as the Queen of Cups in the reverse. This is somebody who's not overly emotional. So even if you know they come across as a water sign or natally they're a water sign, I just feel like they're not like extremely emotional. They might have difficulties when it comes to expressing their feelings. They might also want things that they can't have. So I feel like one of the reasons why they're drawn to you or your partner is because you or your partner is not emo is not available to them so it's like wanting things that they can't have being a little bit petty being a little bit you know immature when they approach love and relationships so i feel like you have somebody that is on the outside looking in wanting what you have or wanting to be with you or wanting you know that re that stability in the relationship but they themselves there is a little bit of work that needs to happen from their end because i feel like they might be um they want what they can't have, so once they have it, you know, then they're not going to want it. So I, I, I feel this energy here. You want to be a little bit careful if this is somebody that you are well aware of. Um, keep your distance, okay? Not because I don't feel like they're malicious or evil or conniving or anything like that. I just feel like it's needless drama. It's drama that can be easily avoided. So... We have as well the lover's card. So I feel for those of you in relationships, stable relationships, things are very, very, very good between you and your partner. And I'm also sensing as well that uh, not only, you know, is there a lot of stability, a lot of trust, there's also a lot of passion in chemistry. And you both are, you know, clearly different, like night and day, but things are able to work. You complement each other well. And I feel like, you know, at your worst, when you're at your worst, the other party knows how to cheer you up. And then when they're dealing with their own things and they're operating at their worst, you know how to lighten the situation. You know how to tease them and to kind of like um, allow them to come out of their, uh, their somber state. So I feel like there is a lot of solidification when it comes to like having faith in your partner. Um, getting married, buying a property together, buying a house together. One person is hesitant and they're still trying, dragging their feet. But then both parties are on board. Both parties have a lot of great faith in each other. So I feel like this per third party is not like, you know, wedged in between like this. I feel like he or she is on the outside looking in, wanting what you have, wishing that they could have what you have. So it's more like admiration, but also a little bit of envy. Okay, it's not a completely like just straight envy where they want to tear you apart. I feel like they admire the stability of your relationship. So let me see in terms of spiritual advice what they have for you for love, romance, and relationships for Virgos. Oh, that's really sweet okay wow okay so all in the upright so strength this is a card about having a little bit of patience being a little bit soft when you're dealing with your partner learning to you know not be so serious all the time inject a little bit more fun more excitement more spo more spontaneity in your relationship and this is a card about, you know, really trusting somebody because if we're looking at this, it's different species. You know, like she, um, the lion could easily turn on her and she likewise could easily manipulate the lion, not feed it, starve it, whatever the situation is. So it requires a great deal of trust. It requires a great deal of like fortitude and also operating from our higher selves, you know, in the way that we deal with our relationship partner. Some of you have a relationship here where somebody is um, willing to go the whole nine yards with you. Okay, so this is another earth sign for some of you. So this is um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And I also feel as well, if you are dealing with a Leo, 
I feel like you're willing to give everything to them. Or if you have an earth sign, they're willing to give everything to you. So they're, they're kind of like giving you, you know, everything that they have on a silver platter. So I feel like you're very, very secure. You're very, very safe. So if there are jealousies, if there are outside influence creeping into the relationship this month, just know that your partner is honest, faithful, righteous, and they're trying to do the right thing. And then we have as well the Empress. This is very, very big pregnancy. Okay. Um, women, if you're watching this and you're not planning to get pregnant, um, be very careful because the strength card is about pregnancy. The Empress is about pregnancy too and how, you know, pregnancy can affect your physical strength, your stamina. And we also have here, this is one of the most fertile person in the deck of, of all the court cards, of course. The King of Pentacles, this is a guy that uh, creates things, okay? So I feel like um, big creative energy, but also um, he will create something in terms of offsprings, in terms of like more, more wealth, more prosperity, more children. So you have a very, very strong pregnancy vibe coming in. You want to be careful. Um, if you're not expecting, for those who are expecting, it's a really good time, I feel, for, um, you know, like bringing children into the picture because I feel like your partner really wants it, your partner is ready, and I do sense that this is the month where uh, these conversations, these decisions will be solidified, and it's going to make you feel very good about the direction of your relationship, okay? I'm really happy to see that for you guys. Um, take care of yourself. I'll be back for the December reading. Take care. Bye-bye.